G'day folks, welcome back. So this afternoon we're going to have a little bit of a chat about static lines. Now, static lines are there for a very important purpose because one of the biggest issues we have in construction nowadays is falls from heights, which is one of the biggest killers we do actually have in construction. All right, now when we're talking about static lines, now static lines can be used for a couple of purposes. They can be used for fall restraint. So that is, you set it up so that the lanyard doesn't allow you to actually reach the edge of the building. Okay, so it keeps you away from that live edge, live edge and prevents fall altogether, which is the ideal setup. Okay, unfortunately we don't live in an ideal world and that's not always possible. So the other type of static line is if you're using it for fall arrest. So that is, it's an attachment point. So if you do actually fall, it's actually going to catch the fall, all right? Now, with a static line, there's a few things we need to keep in mind, all right? So this one I've currently got set up, all right? So with your static line, the height, the height of the static line should be at least 2.1 metres from the working deck. Right, so I'm 183 centimetres, right, and that is about 30 centimetres from the top of me. All right, so that gives us that 2.1 metre height. Right, the maximum length of the static line should be no more than 6 metres. Now, the one I've currently got set up, all right, if we have a quick look at it, all right, it is quite a bit longer than that. Okay, so the current static line I've got is currently actually sitting at 10 metres. All right. Now, the reason for that is, well, I don't have a 6.2 um, points at 6 metres. Now, in the real world, we don't live in an ideal world, so anything is still going to be better than nothing at all. All right, so if you can't get it at exactly 6 metres, look, you're still better off having it 7, 8, 9 metres rather than having nothing at all. So although it says the maximum length of a static line should be no more than 6 metres, in the ideal world, do what you can to keep yourself safe. That's the best way to look at it, all right? So 2.1 metres above the working deck should be um, no more than six metres for a single span. And the other thing that they say is you can, you are allowed no more than 50 mils per metre of sag in it, all right? Which means if you were to have one that was six metres long, six times 50 mil is gonna give you 300 mil. So with the six meter static line, static line, you can have up to 300 mil of sag. Now, the type of static line I've got set up here, all right, this is a webbing static line, right? Now, I don't know that I would actually use this as fall arrest, I would only ever use it as fall restraint. So I would attach to this to prevent me from reaching the edge of that building, all right? If I was going to um, use it for fall arrest. I would much rather have a flexible steel wire rope. You know it's going to be a lot stronger. All right. Now, when you're using flexible steel wire rope as a static line, now some of the things you need to consider is you need to have um, an anchor point that is rated for at least four ton. All right. So four ton anchor point, and that's to allow for any shock loading to take up the fall as you land. Okay. Now, the other things to remember. Now, with a straight flexible steel wire rope, you need to make some form of connection in the end of it or way to terminate it so you can actually attach it to the anchor point. Now, there's a few different ways you can do that. So you can use a hand bone, or otherwise known as a wedge and socket. Okay, but industry terminology is going to, everyone will always call it a hand bone. So you can use a hand bone in the end of it. You can use double saddle clamps to make a loop and attach it back onto itself. So those double saddle clamps, that's going to make the loop and allow you to attach it to it. You could also have a machine splice with a thimble eye. So if you think something like a flexible steel wire rope sling, where it's got that um, machine splice in it, and it's also got a thimble eye. The thimble eye is pretty important because you don't want those wires to end up crushed and opening up on that actual anchor point. And the fourth option you can use is a purpose design fitting. So a purpose design fitting when I talk about that, I think of something like the attachment of a winch rope onto the hook on a lever crane. So it's just that knob on the end of it and it just purposely fits into it. All right, so it's actually designed for that specific purpose. Okay, now some other things we need to consider is um, whenever you're, if you're using a flexible steel wire rope static line, 
you need to be able to put some tension in it, all right, to take all that extra slack out. Remember, no more than 50 mil slack per metre. So how can you tension the static line? Well, there's a few different things you can use. Okay, you can use an open frame turnbuckle. So an open frame turnbuckle, just keep turning that until you tension it. So if there's only a little bit you need to pull out, a turnbuckle's great. Now, the reason it needs to be an open frame turnbuckle is so that you can actually see the threads and you can inspect the threads on it. All right, remember you need to lock that off if you are going to use it because you don't want it to be able to come free on you. A couple of other things you can use. If you need to get a bit more slack out, you can use something like a come-along or a turfer. Now, with a come-along or a turfer, they're not designed for any shock loading, so they need to be taken out of the line once you get the tension in it. So the best way to take them out is make sure you secure, once you've got the tension in the static line, secure the ends of the static line and then remove that tensioning device. Now, if you are using a webbing one like this, so let's have a look here. All right. So if you've got the ratchet and pull type here, all right, what you need to do is make sure you do actually lock that off as well. All right, make sure if it does take it, it's not going to come out. So remember, whatever tension device you've got, you've got to make sure that you either lock it off or remove it. Okay, so they're just the basics on the use of a static line. Now, remember, whenever you are using a static line, that full restraint is always going to be preferable to fall or rest. All right? The only time you would use fall or rest is if there is no other reasonable form of um, safety. Okay, You would always prefer not to fall rather than have something catch you when you do fall. All right, so that was just a quick one, just going over some of the pointers of the static line. Now, remember, you must always inspect it everything you use. Um, make sure that any of your anchor points, they are secured. Um, now, if you are just using a anchor point for a single person, just using the harness and lanyard system, rather than using the static line, your anchor point's gotta be good for one and a half ton. If you have two people on the same anchor point, which look, I wouldn't necessarily recommend because if two people were to fall, what will happen is as they come down, they'll smash into each other. But if you are using two people on a single anchor point, it's gotta be good for 2.1 ton. So one and a half ton for a single person, 2.1 ton for two people, or if you are using a static line, it must be rated for four ton. So the reason if we have a look over here, I'll go back over here and have a look. All right, now this one here, this is used for fall restraint. It's not going to allow me to get to the edge, which is why I don't have anything bigger on it. So at the moment I have one ton slings either side. Now, if you've been watching some of the other videos, you'll realize that if I've got a one and a half ton sling that's choked around a square load, it's only going to be good for half of that one ton, which means realistically this current setup, it's only good for 500 kilos. If you are using it for a static line, make sure you take into account any reading factors or angle factors if you're putting it around a beam. Okay, don't just grab a four ton sling, wrap it around a um, beam and say that it's still good for four ton, all right? Because it's not going to be. So always take that into account and think about the whole system, all right? The weakest point in the system on a static line should be no good for at least four ton. Um, all right, so that was just a quick um, discussion on some of the basics of the static line. So if you do have any questions about it, um, don't forget to leave a comment. And if you wanna keep up with the videos, um, hit that like and subscribe button and you'll get notified next time the videos come out. All right, thanks for your time. Have a great day. See you in the next video.